For nearly the past two years, we've watched as significant events relating to the Beast's agenda have played out on a 40-day schedule. In this video, I'll take you through these events step-by-step, step, including the most recent one that occurred this past week and the next one coming up in June. It started with the stock market crash in 2008. Everyone knows the market dropped exactly 777 points on the Feast of Trumpets that year. But what most people don't know is that started a timeline that has played out exactly as it was written in the Bible concerning Noah's flood. The timeline started at the 777 and peaked at the New York flood of 2012, Hurricane Sandy. And again, exactly as stated in Genesis, the flood hit New York at the start of the fifth year after the 777, representing the start of Noah's 600th year. The end of that Noah timeline landed exactly on the window of June 11th through the 13th, 2014, and overlapped with the actual true biblical date of Noah's flood in 2014 on the window of June 13th through the 15th. And on that watch, June 12th through the 15th, the Camp Spiker massacre occurred, propelling the world into war against the Islamic State. In the story of Noah, the flood starts with 40 days of rain. In 2014, Noah's 40 days of rain on the true biblical calendar started on the window of June 13th through the 15th and ended on the window of July 23rd through the 25th. On that very end of the 40 days of Noah's reign, on July 24, 2014, the Islamic State destroyed the tomb of Jonah. In the story of Jonah, there are also 40 days. However, in Jonah, the 40 days start after three days. When we follow the biblical timeline exactly, counting July 23rd, 24th, and 25th as the three days, followed by 40 days, we end up on the window of September 3rd through the 5th. On that date, September 4th, the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong, went into seclusion. That seclusion was significant because it lasted exactly 40 days. Kim Jong came out of seclusion on October 14th, which falls within the next three-day window. Then, 40 days after October 13th through the 15th, lands on the next window of November 22nd through the 24th. On November 24th, North Korea hacked into Sony Pictures, and according to alleged witnesses, that hack occurred at 8.15 a.m., 8.15 is significant because it's the exact time that the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima 69 years prior. So that morning, at the end of 40 days, on November 24th, North Korea hacked into Sony Pictures at 8.15 a.m. And that same evening, at exactly 8.15 p.m., the Ferguson verdict was announced. That was also significant because the Ferguson verdict was allegedly about a Michael Brown of Ferguson, Missouri, who looked identical to another boy named Michael Brown who died in Sacramento, California, and whose funeral was held on the same date that the Ferguson shooting allegedly occurred. And yet even more strange, the date, August 9th, on which both the funeral of Michael Brown of California and the shooting of Michael Brown of Missouri occurred, was also the exact date that the second bomb was dropped on Japan, the dropping of the bomb on Nagasaki. The next 40 days after November 22nd through the 24th ended on January 1st through the 3rd, 2015. January 2, 2015 was the exact date that the U.S. sanctioned North Korea for the Sony hack, which again occurred 40 days prior. 40 days after January 1st through the 3rd landed on February 10th through the 12th, 2015. On February 10th, it was announced that the Obama administration would submit a bill to officially go to war with the Islamic State. 40 days after February 10th through the 12th landed on March 22nd through the 24th, 2015. 
On March 22nd, the Islamic State released a hit list of 100 American military personnel. Forty days after March 22nd through the 24th landed on May 1st through the 3rd, 2015. On May 3rd, the Islamic State claimed responsibility for an attack in Texas that was recorded as the first attack in the United States by the group. Forty days after May 1st through the 3rd landed on June 10th through the 12th, 2015. On June 12th, the alleged leader of al-Qaeda was killed in a U.S. drone strike. This occurred in the midst of the announced cyber attack on the United States federal government, specifically the Office of Personnel Management. On June 11th, ABC News announced that forms containing highly sensitive information about acquaintances, friends, and family members and psychological information of federal employees was breached. Investigators believed the Chinese government was responsible for the breach, which was considered the worst cyber attack ever perpetrated against the U.S. government. In addition to those two events, that 40-day watch was also the date a judge in Ohio found probable cause to charge a police officer for murder for the fatal shooting of Tamur Rice. On Thursday, June 11, 2015, the judge announced there were grounds to charge the officer. Exactly 40 days after June 10th through the 12th landed on July 20th through the 22nd, 2015. On July 22nd, the memorial for Sandra Bland was held. On July 20th, the U.S. and Cuba embassies opened. And on July 21st, Pope Francis met with mayors from around the world and they signed on to his climate declaration. So many people think these climate contracts are innocent, yet they don't realize the Vatican and UN declared via the Club of Rome that the real enemy is humanity itself and the climate crisis is simply an excuse to declare war on humanity. Please look into geoengineering. That has a lot to do with this war on humanity in the name of the climate crisis. Exactly 40 days after July 20th through the 22nd landed on August 29th through the 31st. On August 30th, the Islamic State destroyed the Temple of Bel, otherwise known as the Temple of Baal. 40 days after August 29th through the 31st ended on October 8th through the 10th, 2015. October 9, 2015 was the exact start of what appears to be the seventh year of Daniel's week. Forty days after October 8th through the 10th landed on November 17th through the 19th, 2015. On November 17th, France joined in the fight against the Islamic State and bombed Syria while the U.S. House voted on November 19th to essentially halt a program that was aimed at resettling Syrian refugees in the United States. Also on that watch, on November 17th, police raids were conducted in Belgium, and you'll notice later these raids in Belgium have continued to occur on the 40-day schedule. This 40-day period from October to November 2015 was also more interesting than usual because it started on the Draconid meteor shower on October 8th and ended on the Leonid meteor shower of November 17th and 18th, which, as we've discussed in previous videos, may also represent 40 days of rain. The 40-day period between the Draconids and Leonids is also significant because the Draconid meteor shower is mentioned in Revelation 12 in association with the stars being cast to the earth, which we know also refers to the meteorite strike that both Daniel and Jesus prophesied will end our current civilization. The fact that this obvious 40-day schedule just happened to land exactly on the 40 days of rain on the true biblical calendar in 2014 and the exact 40 days of rain between the Draconids and Leonids in 2015 may not be coincidence. Remember, that was also exactly one week after Graham Hancock released his new book, which includes historical information concerning a large meteor, the fragments of which apparently hit the Earth in the past and may hit the Earth again in the future during the torrid meteor shower, which also rains down during the 40 days of rain between the Draconids and Leonids. 
So again, their 40-day schedule landed on the exact window between the Draconids and Leonids, the 40 days of meteor rain. The next 40-day period after November 17th through the 19th ended on December 27th through the 29th, 2015. On December 28th, it was discovered that a database containing personal information for 191 million U.S. voters was open for anyone to access on the Internet for an unknown length of time. Also on that watch, on December 28th, hundreds of fighters and civilians in Syria were evacuated from their homeland under a U.N. deal. And remember, it was the U.N., as the League of Nations, who originally went into that region and moved out the Ottoman Empire. But they came in under the guise of helping and remained there as king. The book of Daniel actually gives us the year. It says the 20th day, which is the 20th year, because it was 1920, and it was also the 20th century because it happened in the early 1900s. So it was literally the 20th day that they came in to help, but remained there as king. So when you look at this, on the watch, on the exact schedule that they're keeping, they moved those people out of that land that they've been taking over for the past 100 years. And it even goes back further than that, because it goes all the way back to the beginnings of the Roman Empire when the Pope was trying to take over that region. It goes way back to the creation of Islam, and that was one tactic that they used to take over that land. So they're using the same tactics. The UN is the seventh head of the beast, and the Pope is the lamb who speaks like a dragon, the second beast in Revelation 13. So that's not a coincidence. And yet again, more Belgium raids were held on December 27th and 28th, and an alleged terrorist captured right on their schedule. In addition, another major development in the Tamur Rice case again fell on the 40-day schedule. On Monday, December 28, 2015, the grand jury decided not to indict the officers involved in the shooting. So that was a major development also on the 40-day watch. 40 days after December 27th through the 29th landed on February 5th through the 7th, 2016, on Sunday, February 7th, the UN held an emergency meeting to discuss a rocket launched by North Korea on the start of the Chinese New Year. Forty days after February 5th through the 7th landed on March 16th through the 18th, 2016. On March 18th, 2016, yet another Belgium terrorist was caught in another series of raids right on the schedule. Also on that date, a threat letter was sent to Donald Trump's son. And most recently, 40 days after March 16th through the 18th, landed on April 25th through the 27th, 2016. And again, yet another huge development in the Tamur Rice case. On April 25th, the announcement was made that the city of Cleveland, Ohio, will pay $6 million in a settlement to the Tamur Rice family. And yet again, the alleged terrorist suspect that was captured in Belgium on the former 40-day watch appeared in court. Again, right on the schedule. So is that coincidence that the Temple of Bell would be destroyed on the 40-day schedule, followed by not one, not two, not three, but four major developments concerning terrorists in Belgium? Is it really coincidence that there are not one, not two, but three major developments in the Tamur Rice case that have occurred on this 40-day schedule? Remember, the Ferguson verdict started this recent series of racist events, and that clearly referenced Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The next 40 days will end on the window of June 4th through the 6th, 2016. And there's one other point I want to make about the Belgium terrorist connections to the destruction and reconstruction of the Temple of Bell. 
The reconstructed Arch of Bell or Bale was raised up on April 19th in London, and it stood for three days until April 21st. Originally, it was supposed to stand in New York as well, but according to this New York Times article, the New York Arch will not be set up until September. From what I can tell, they're setting it up during World Heritage Week, which appears to be scheduled for September 10th through the 26th. So although they call this monument the Arch of Triumph, it actually represents destruction, and the prophecy tells us why they glorify this monument of destruction. They believe they are going to rise to world power after the meteor strike. So they think the Arch of Triumph represents yet another victory for them that is coming. But the prophecy that has been proven accurate tells us they will be destroyed. They are not going to rise. They are going to fall instead. It tells us they will only survive for three and a half years after the meteorite. So that arch of triumph that they so proudly set up on either side of the Atlantic Ocean, where the Bible seems to tell us the meteor will hit, that arch does not represent their triumph. It represents their destruction. But notice that not only are they framing the Atlantic Ocean by setting up that Arch of Destruction in London and New York on either side of what appears to be one of the coming impact zones, but also they seem to be framing the six-month period between April 19th when they set up the London Arch and September 10th when they will set up the New York Arch. And actually, it would frame April 19th through September 26th since that's the end of World Heritage Week, apparently. In other words, with the setting up of this historic monument of destruction, they seem to be framing both the time and the place of the coming impact. So that's a full recap of the 40-day schedule that they seem to be following. For more information, you can check out the playlist Bibles Countdown to the Meteorite and Rescue linked here and on my main channel page. The charts are also available to print for free on my website linked below. Thank you to everyone who supports this work. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.